Hey guys, Roy here from Apotheca Marketing. Today we're gonna to talk about a pet peeve of mine that I always run into with reporting, especially for companies where the executives want to kind of brag. We're gonna talk about vanity metrics and why you shouldn't fall prey to them and what they are and how to kind of educate people not to be looking at them. We'll talk about it right now. So what is a vanity metric? Well, you know, a vanity metric is something that looks good on the surface, right? And you know what I'm talking about. It's executive reports, you know? They get these reports that are very high level, talks about things like followers, like how many Facebook followers do we have? How many followers do we have on, on you know, Instagram or TikTok? It doesn't have a lot of meat. It's just a big number that shows like, hey, we can brag about the fact that we have 10,000 more followers than one of our competitors. And there's a number of metrics like that. Metrics that on the surface seem important. They look good. They can show growth. So you can walk into a board meeting and say, hey, our traffic has grown uh, you know, 50% this year. But it's not really telling you anything about your business. It's just showing traffic growth or it's showing followers. So one of the things we like to say is that is the metric that you're tracking actionable or does it just look good? If it's not actionable, it's only interesting. It's interesting that your traffic grew by 50% this year. It doesn't say anything about what you're doing with your marketing programs. It doesn't say anything about your profitability. How many leads are you getting? How many sales are you getting? Is that traffic translating into real business metrics? So some of these, like I said, followers, social media followers. Yes, it's great to have more followers on social media. Of course you wanna grow your social media programs, but why do you wanna grow them? You want them to eventually turn into business. You want those followers to engage with your posts, with your company, with your brand, and know more about your brand. That way when they're looking to buy something, they remember you, or they click through on one of your product links, or they click through on one of your articles or whatever it is you're featuring. The goal though is not just to have those followers, it's to have them do something that's important to your business. So for instance, if you have a very entertaining uh, TikTok account and you get a ton of viral followers, does it actually translate into business? Because otherwise it's just kind of fun. It's a way to get your brand out there. But if it's not translating into business, it really doesn't mean anything for you. The same thing with traffic. So one of the things we see from executives all the time is like, how many people are we getting to the site? What's our traffic? How many visitors are we getting? Again, that's important because the more people you get coming to your site, the more likelihood there is that they will purchase. The problem is, is that that traffic isn't necessarily traffic that you want. Is it your customer or did they see a link or a social media post that maybe is not indicative of the products or services that you sell, but it's generating a lot of traffic. A good example of this, it goes back to my early career where I worked with a B2B publishing company that had a magazine dedicated to people who manufacture intimate apparel, underwear, that type of thing, uh, lingerie, you know. So these are the people, it's geared towards the people that actually produce these items. They're manufacturing underwear and boxers and that type of thing. Well, they were bragging in the board meetings, they were bragging to other people in the company how they had exponentially more traffic than anybody else in the company, than any of the other magazines. And this is true. It was, it was like a shockingly higher number than uh, the other publications. Well, when we actually started to take a look at the analytics, we took a look at the keywords that were driving this traffic. And they were chagrined when they found out what the driver of this traffic was. They were ranking exceptionally high and getting an immense amount of click-throughs for the keyword teen panties, which obviously is not the audience they were looking for. That is not the audience they were wanting to drive. So, you know, they were, you know, taken aback by this, that their traffic was not valid traffic, at least for their business. That's not what they were intending to sell or what the audience they were trending to appeal to. 
Similarly, you know, we, we've had uh, clients that have, for instance, done their own display campaigns and we're so happy. They're like, look how many click throughs we're getting on this display campaign. And it's sending this much traffic to our site. Well, when we take a look, the bounce rate was nearly 100 percent. And there was a huge amount of traffic coming from these display campaigns. But when we dug into it, we discovered that they were those those banner ads were appearing on game apps for kids. And so kids were accidentally clicking on these banner ads. Obviously, you know, their business was selling multimillion dollar homes. These children playing whatever game or app is popular at the moment were not their customer. And so they were spending a ton of money. They were getting a huge amount of traffic for nothing and was not what they wanted. So in those situations, traffic doesn't tell you anything. Is it the traffic that you want? Is it the audience that you want? Again, traffic can be important, but you have to look at it from where it's coming from, the segments and other information that will help make it actionable. Are you driving relevant traffic? Are you driving specific traffic to specific pages? And are they then doing something? Related to this, another similar metric that we see as a vanity metric all the time is page views. So, you know, people like to brag like, hey, this month we had, you know, 50% more page views or we had 100,000 page views. That's great. But again, was it somebody actually looking at your content that meant you wanted to be there? Or were you just generating a lot of traffic from people that you weren't interested in? Or were people having to click around a lot because maybe your site's not particularly easy to find stuff? And maybe they're having to click through multiple pages before they find what they're looking for, that they're you know just clicking and clicking and clicking. So it's not necessarily a positive metric in this case because they can't find what they're looking for but you're generating a lot of page views. A similar one to that that we see sometimes is time on site. We'll see executives that are like, look, they have to be interested in our content because they spent you know, 30 minutes on our site. And that could be true. It could be that they're reading a blog. It could be they're watching some videos or they're doing some product research. Or it could be that you have a lot of people that walk away from your website and are actually engaging in it. Or they're having a hard time finding stuff. They're spending more time on your site because they can't actually find it uh, or they can't understand how to navigate your site. So it's understanding the context of those metrics and the time frame and the audience that's going to add value. Another um, metric we see that's a vanity metric a lot of times is ad impressions so, or, or even social media impressions. So X number of people have seen our ad. And this is particularly the case with display advertising and banner ads where you will focus on or executives will focus on the fact that X number of people saw this ad. All right. So maybe over the course of a month, they had, you know, 500,000 people, 500,000 impressions on that ad. They're assuming 500,000 people saw their brand. Well, as you know, that's probably not the case because just because a banner ad has an impression just because it loads on a page doesn't mean one that the user actually saw it. It means that it was on that page, that it could have been at the bottom of the page. It could have been off to the side. It doesn't mean that they looked at it and it definitely doesn't mean that they engaged with it. Obviously, if you're running an ad, you want them to engage with it. You would want them to have enough interest to actually click through on it to visit your site and to learn more information or to buy. So just that impression, doesn't mean a lot in isolation. Sure, can it mean that people are seeing your brand, that they're seeing the brand more often and potentially engaging with it later? Yeah, it can. But again, by itself, just as a metric that you're summing up how many impressions you got during a month, it doesn't really mean a lot for your business. SEO rankings are another area where, you know, people like to be able to brag about that they're, you know, first for a certain number of keywords. Um, and a lot of agencies will actually do this too. And they'll actually say like, hey, we got you to first uh, for 30 keywords that you weren't before. Well, again, that sounds good. Right? We all know that good rankings are going to lead to more clicks. And the more clicks you have, the better. 
So, but in isolation, again, those rankings don't really mean anything. So just because you're ranking for 50 or 100 more keywords that you weren't before, are they the right keywords for your business? Are those, are you just ranking for something that isn't really targeted towards your audience or towards your products? Are people actually clicking on those ads? So the ranking in and of itself, yeah, that's nice. Is anybody clicking on it? And once they click on it, what are they doing on your site? Are they bouncing? Are they engaging with your content? Are they purchasing? That is the metric that you want to look at is how many people are engaging with content on your site, how many are doing what you want them to do on the site, whether it's a lead generation, whether it's a download, or whether it's a, you know, a sale of an item. That rank means nothing in isolation without looking at those other pieces of information and data. Another one that isn't necessarily a vanity metric as much as it could be potentially misleading. And it's something that agencies report on a lot. And it's ROAS. It's return on ad spend. And so essentially what you're looking at is how much money did you spend versus how much revenue did you generate? So if you make a two ROAS, you're making twice as much money as you spent, right? Um, but is that truly good or profitable. And so, you know, an agency will oftentimes, especially with paid search, will come back and say, hey, your ROAS on this program was a, was a two. That sounds good, but it's not profit. ROAS is just a return on ad spend. It means that you didn't spend more than you made in gross revenue. And why that's important is because it's not taking into consideration cost of goods sold, it's not taking into consideration any other expenses that you may have incurred. And it's not taking into consideration the cost of actually using that ad agency. I had this argument discussion early in my career with a paid search agency that was doing work for us. And they were super proud of the ROAS that they were generating for our paid search program. Well, the problem was, is that we were selling automotive parts and automotive parts, especially in certain categories, have a very low profitability. The margin is just not there. So we needed to have a ROAS that was significantly higher than what they were generating. And even just product profitability, you know, considered, if you added in their agency fees on top of it, we were losing money. And so while there is a value to acquiring a customer, you know, there's, there's an inherent value to that. You may lose money on that first purchase with a customer, but make more money with them later. And that's, you know, their lifetime value. But from a pure profitability standpoint, like if you don't have a lot of returning customers, then that ROAS becomes kind of misleading. And so if somebody's trumpeting, you know, the ROAS that they have and saying, hey, this is, you know, it looks great, but it's just you got to keep in mind that it's not a return on investment. It's not profit. It's not indicative of how much money you're actually making. It just means that you're not losing money out of the gate. Okay, so like we said, you're not really wanting to track vanity metrics. I mean, those, those sound great, they're great to show off, but they're not really helping your business. So what do you wanna do? You wanna look at actionable metrics. You wanna look at stuff that's going to help improve your profitability stuff that's going to help you target your audience. Are these metrics that you're looking at related to generating sales or leads or whatever your goal is? Is it, you know, information that is going to tell you more about how valuable your customers are or what they're looking for? And so all of these things are stuff that you're going to want to look at, not out of context, not just as a some number, uh, you know, total something or other but something that gives you more information. This isn't always an easy conversation to have with your executives. <laughs> and uh, I don't think the executive dashboard is gonna be going away anytime soon, but it is an important conversation to start having. And it's about the importance of metrics and how you track things in your organization and how it's digested. It always helps if when you're providing some of this information is to provide it in context to say, yes, we had an increase in traffic, but here's our analysis of that. And that's where 
as a marketer or as somebody who's looking at marketing programs, that analysis is what is important. So they may still want to look at that total number, but if you can provide some context for it, if you can provide more information about how it's useful to the company, then you're providing a lot more value in the long run. Give us a like if you found this helpful and obviously uh, join us and subscribe if you want to keep uh, seeing more of this kind of information and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.